Greetings, I am Dr. S. Monish Palachi. Today, we will be talking about Chilaiditi Syndrome. This condition is named after Demetrius Chilaiditi, a Greek radiologist who described the radiographic findings of this condition in 1910 while working in Vienna, Austria. However, the first description of the interposition of colon between the liver and the right hemidiaphragm was published by Cantini in the year 1865. This image shows Demetrius Chilaiditi. So, what is Chilaiditi sign? Chilaiditi sign is a rare radiological finding in which there is colonic interposition between the diaphragm and the liver. It is an usually asymptomatic finding which is discovered incidentally. It is a cause of pseudo-pneumoperitoneum. This image shows a chest x-ray with white arrows which point to the interposed segment of colon between the right hemidiaphragm and the liver which appear to be pneumoperitoneum but in reality is pseudo-pneumoperitoneum or chilidity sign. What is the difference between chilidity sign and chilidity syndrome? Chilidity syndrome is the medical condition in which a chilidity sign is accompanied by clinical signs and symptoms. This image shows interposition of the large intestine between the liver and the right hemidiaphragm. Chilaiditi syndrome is a rare condition which predominantly affects older males. The male-female ratio is 4 is to 1. Intestinal, hepatic and or diaphragmatic etiologies play an important role in the pathogenesis of chilaiditi sign as well as chilaiditi syndrome. Normally, the suspensory ligaments and the fixation of the colon impede interposition of the large intestine between the liver and the diaphragm. However, when there are variations in the normal anatomy, it can lead to interposition. These anatomical variations can include absence, laxity, or elongation of the suspensory ligaments of the transverse colon or the falciform ligament, as well as dolicocolons or congenital malpositions. These anatomic distortions can also result from certain functional disorders such as chronic constipation in which there is colonic elongation and redundancy, aerophagia in which there is gaseous distension of the colon, cirrhosis where there is liver atrophy or relative atrophy in the medial segment of the left lobe of the liver, diaphragmatic paralysis, chronic lung disease which can result in enlargement of the lower thoracic cavity, obesity and any condition which causes increased intra-abdominal pressure such as multiple pregnancies and ascites. The clinical signs and symptoms include abdominal pain which can range from chronic intermittent abdominal pain to acute severe abdominal pain, constipation, anorexia, vomiting, chest pain which may resemble angina, pectoris and respiratory distress. The clinical differential diagnosis of chilaiditi syndrome include intestinal obstruction, volvulus, intersusception, ischemic bowel, as well as inflammatory conditions such as diverticulitis and appendicitis. However, it must be remembered that these intestinal disorders can also occur within the interposed colon in chilaiditi syndrome. The conditions complicating chilaiditi syndrome can include volvulus of the cecum, splenic flexure or transverse colon, cecal perforation, or even perforated diaphragmatic appendicitis. So what is the relationship between chilaiditi syndrome and intestinal obstruction? According to certain authors, chilaiditi syndrome should be considered as a rare cause of intestinal obstruction. However, colonic pseudo-obstruction that is Ogilvy syndrome has also been observed in patients with chilaiditi syndrome. Additionally, chilaiditi syndrome can be associated with a variety of gastrointestinal malignancies such as those of the colon, rectum or even the stomach. This slide 
shows a chest X-ray which illustrates Chilaiditi sign. Now, Chilaiditi sign and Chilaiditi syndrome both are radiological diagnosis basically. The following criteria must be met to diagnose these conditions. 1. The right hemidiaphragm must be adequately elevated above the liver by the intestine. The bowel must be distended by air to illustrate pseudonemoperitoneum. Finally, the superior margin of the liver must be depressed below the level of the left hemidiaphragm. Additionally, in this X-ray, we are able to appreciate the normal plicae circulaires or hostile markings of the colon under the diaphragm. The main important radiological differential diagnosis of Chilaiditi sign and Chilaiditi syndrome are pneumoperitoneum and subphrenic abscess. The finding of normal plicase circulaires or hostel markings of the colon under the diaphragm can rule out these entities. Moreover, changing the position of the patient with Chilaiditi sign will not change the position of the radiolucency. Unlike that in a patient with free air in the peritoneal cavity. Similarly, when using ultrasound, altering the position of the patient does not lead to change in the location of the gas echo as opposed to a patient with pneumoperitoneum. If a radiograph or ultrasound cannot clearly determine whether the subdiaphragmatic air is free or intraluminal, a computed tomography scan or CT scan is recommended to establish an accurate diagnosis assuming that the patient is clinically stable. The role of CT If there is clinical suspicion of abdominal visceral perforation and plain radiographic appearances are unclear, abdominal CT can be performed to clarify whether there is pneumoperitoneum. CT can clearly demonstrate the presence of interposed colonic loops between the right hemidiaphragm and the liver with no free intraperitoneal air, thus ruling out true pneumoperitoneum and confirming the diagnosis of pseudo-pneumoperitoneum. Here, in this CT image, we are able to see the loops of bowel present just superior to the liver and underneath the diaphragm. Coming to the treatment of these conditions. No intervention is required for an asymptomatic patient, that is an individual with Chilaiditi sign. Now, in a patient with Chilaiditi syndrome, the initial management should include bed rest, intravenous fluid therapy, bowel decompression, enemas and laxatives, that is meaning to say that conservative treatment is the first line of management here. Now, repeat radiograph following bowel decompression may show disappearance of the air below the diaphragm. Thus, bowel decompression documented by a follow-up radiograph can confirm both the diagnosis as well as confirm the success of the therapy by showing the disappearance of the subdiaphragmatic air and repositioning of distended intestine back to the normal position beneath the liver. If the patient does not respond to the initial conservative management, and if either the obstruction fails to resolve or there is evidence of bowel ischemia, then surgical intervention is indicated. In recent years, surgical intervention has been increasingly used in order to manage symptoms of chronic intermittent abdominal pain. The appropriate surgical approach depends on the nature of the interposed segment of the colon. Cecopexy may be adequate to eliminate the possibility of recurrence in an uncomplicated cecal valvulus unless gangrene or perforation necessitates surgical resection. However, colonic resection is the best option for a valvulus of the transverse colon and attempts at colonoscopic reduction are not recommended due to a high frequency of gangrene in this type of valvulus. 
So what is the importance of these conditions as far as performing procedures goes? Now, it is important to identify a chelidity sign in order to prevent complications occurring during a percutaneous transhepatic procedure or liver biopsy. This is particularly so in cirrhotic patients who are predisposed to the development of chelidity sign. An interposed segment of bowel can make it very difficult to perform colonoscopy due to the risk of progressive air entrapment in an acutely angulated interposed bowel which could potentially lead to perforation. Thank you.